Hello everyone, Stepan here. I'll show you one of the best Sicilian Dragon games for white I've ever seen and probably one of the most precise uh, attacking games for white against the Sicilian Dragon. It was played between Bobby Fischer and Bent Larsen in the 58 Portologi Interzonal Tournament, which was to determine six players who would qualify uh, for the Bled Zagreb Belgrade Candidates Tournament in 1959, which would ultimately decide the challenger to Mikhail Botivnik, who was the world champion at the time. As it's well known, it was Mikhail Tal, and he ended up, uh, well, the rest is history. But uh, Bobby Fischer was in the end one of the six to qualify for the, ca for the candidates in uh, former Yugoslavia, and the other five were, were, were Tal, Paul Benko, Gustafsson, the Swedish GM, uh, Svetozar Gligoric, the best Yugoslavian grandmaster, and uh, Tigran Petrosian. So the six of them qualified, and they played in the candidates in Ble Bled Zagreb and Belgrade. And in this game, uh, Bobby Fischer played white against Larsen, who was his very good friend, but a rival as well. And as it's well known in 71, in his uh, road to the World Championship match against Spassky, he crushed uh, Bent Larsen 6-0. So uh, he had a much better score, even when he was a kid. And in this game, in 58, he was only 15, so he was already much better than uh, Bent Larsen. Bobby opened with pawn to e4. We have the Sicilian and the main line Sicilian dragon by both players, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight c3, and now not a6, uh, the knight or for something else, but g6. Bent Larsen goes for the dragon Sicilian, which is one of the sharpest openings, and to choose this against Bobby Fischer at 15, who was already technically one of the strongest players in the world, was perhaps an unwise decision, and usually people try to fight him with the Karo Khan or with something more passive. Uh, bishop to e3, Bobby Fischer goes for the Yugoslav attack, the setup with bishop to c4 and f3, uh, bishop to g7, f3, castles kingside, queen to d2, preparing to uh, challenge the black bishop on h6, knight to c6, bishop to c4, these are all uh, standard moves so far, moves so far, and Bent Larsen now goes for a slightly uncommon line, which is uh, rarely played from this position. The main move here is bishop to d7, of course, and after bishop to d7, the main line dragon goes for another 10 moves, and there were more than 10,000 games, grandmaster games from this position. So white would castle here, a queenside, rook to c8, bishop to b3, knight to e5, king to b1, etc. So both sides have a plan of attacking the, uh, the other one's king, and whoever is faster gets to win the game in most cases. So this is the standard continuation after bishop to d7 on uh, move 9. But Bent Larsen were, went for an uncommon uh, continuation with knight takes d4. And this is a line which uh, Hikaru Nakamura used to play a lot, so it's not bad, it's equal, but white is supposed to have a, a, a slight edge compared to the other line with bishop to d7. So knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop to e6. Uh, offering a trade of bishops, bishop to b3, uh, declining, and now queen to a5, white castles queenside, b5, starting an attack, but it could be argued that white has a stronger attack and a stronger, uh, uh, stronger initiative in this position, because black doesn't really have that much uh, with, with b5 and b4, so uh, Bobby just plays king to b1, getting his king to safety, b4, knight to d5, challenging uh, the knight on f6, bishop takes... And now in this position, Bobby takes with the bishop, which is actually a slight inaccuracy. It was better to take with the pawn. And after bishop takes d5, Bent Larsen could have uh, won a pawn comfortably and had a slight slight edge in the position. And if he took with knight takes d5, then after e takes d5, queen takes d5, black is a pawn up, but white has compensation for the pawn. And the position would be equal, black wouldn't be any worse than white. And after queen takes b4, white regains his pawn, but... For that, he opens up the b-file to his king. Uh, white would have a slightly unsafe king, but the position would be would be okay for him. But after bishop takes d5, uh, Bent Larsen didn't take the bishop. He didn't uh, relinquish white of his bishop pair. He played rook a to c8, which is an active move, but considering the circumstances and the fact that Bobby took with the bishop, it's a mistake because he should have taken uh, the pawn and the bishop pair especially. And... Rook a to c8 is just a mistake, and from this position on, Bobby is going to have a more and more dominant position as the moves go on. Uh, he played bishop to b3, of course, saving his bishop, not giving the pawn uh, to Larsen, and not opening the b-file, which is most important. Rook to c7, preparing to double rooks, which is an okay idea, but once again it's too slow, and it's giving white too much time. And now it's Bobby's turn to attack, and he starts what is a common plan in the Sicilian dragon and in some other uh, positions like the Kremlin variation of the Sicilian, what Bobby used to refer to as sec-sec-mate, just 
push your age pawn, open, open up your opponent's king side and checkmate him. So h4. And there isn't really much that black can do to prevent this. He plays queen to b5, uh, h5, rook uh, f to c8, doubling rooks. But this is now already uh, too much of an attack for, for white. And he just takes on g6, h takes g6, and now g4 starting to dislodge the knight uh, from, from f6, and after g5, knight to, uh, knight to h5, usually uh, white will sacrifice the exchange, this is a very common idea. And now after a5, which is once again too slow, it's, uh, it's threatening to trap the bishop, but black doesn't have time to do that yet. Now g5 attacking the knight, knight to h5, and of course rook takes, sec sec mate. And here, uh, Bent Larsen actually made a mistake. The best move in this position was to take the bishop, just relieving some of the pressure from the position, especially from the long diagonal, because if he ever allows Bobby to take his bishop on, on g7, then the king will come to g7, where it's more vul vulnerable to attacks. So it was better to exchange first, but after rook takes h5, he took the rook, which now gives Bobby an excellent possibility to smash him with his bishop pair, and if uh, if you notice the bishop on, on b3, this is probably the most active piece on the board, it's, it's just controlling uh, black's entire king's position, and in conjunction with the Bobby's next move, exploiting the fact that he was given a tempo and a space for, for his g-pawn to advance, g6, now the position is just completely lost, and there is no way for, for black to prevent uh, an onslaught on his king side. Uh, here Bent Larsen tries e5, gaining a tempo on the bishop, but of course Bobby can take with check first, so g takes f7, we check, and now rook to f8. The best move was to take with the, to, to take with the rook, with rook takes f7, and after this black, okay, once again wouldn't stand the chance, but the position would have been better. But after, rook to f, uh, after king to f8, Simply bishop to e3, retreating, and another thing should be mentioned, by the way, uh, before this, the best move for Bobby was uh, queen to g5 in this position. If he had played queen to g5, then of course uh, black can never capture the bishop because the queen is hanging, and he would have increased his attacking chances because this isn't going away, he can always take on f7 because the pawn is pinned uh, by the bishop, so queen to g5 would have been much better. But after uh, g takes f7, uh, king to f8, and now bishop to e3, saving his bishop. Queen is not on g5, so the bishop is hanging. Bent Larsen here plays d5, which, okay, it's an okay move. He's opening up the position and trying to create some attacking chances for him, but his king is in too much trouble for any of that to work uh, anytime soon. Uh, Bobby just takes, he takes d5, and now rook takes, uh, rook takes f7, which now it's much worse than before, because now after d6, he has to do something about about the pawn, and if he allows the pawn to get uh, to to d7, that's it. He already has only two defenders on on the d7 square, and if he doesn't move the rook back to d7 now, then the pawn is advancing and the rook is attacked at the same time. And in this position, he played a really dubious move. He played rook to f6, not preventing uh, pawn to d7, and Bobby just played bishop to d5, gaining a tempo uh, on the rook. And if the rook ever moves, then bishop uh, bishop e7 check is checkmate in four moves because once again of the very strong bishop on b3 and the king is completely cut off from any from any squares for now it only has one square and it's pretty much one move away from being from being checkmated so after bishop to g5 uh, bent larsen uh, tries queen to b7 defending but it doesn't really defend anything bobby just takes the rook bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and now d7 attacking the rook rook to d8 and after queen to d6 check he resigned because it's actually checkmate in six moves and it's an unavoidable checkmate and the best move is uh, king to g7 and after rook to g1 check just king to h7 this would have been the only option king takes f f6 queen takes d7 and queen to g6 check king to h8 and this is it you can you can see the checkmate it's unavoidable because of the bishop the rook and the queen so a very nice performance but by 15-year-old uh, Bobby Fischer and he absolutely crushed Bent Larsen who was at the time a much stronger grandmaster and he was a stronger contender for the candidates tournament. He was actually expected to do much better. He didn't make the six uh, who went to Bled Zagreb and Belgrade in 59 and he actually didn't get to, to fight for the world championship anymore. Uh, and Bobby Fischer got in, he played the Bled Zagreb uh, candidates tournament but unfortunately he wasn't as strong yet, and uh, Mikhail Tal won, and he got to challenge Botvinnik for the title. Okay, everybody, uh, I hope you liked this very aggressive approach uh, Bobby Fischer had to crushing the Sicilian Dragon, and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.